I've come back to the Hampshire Avon, not far above Christchurch. Much shallower swim today. There's a strong southerly, sort of southwest wind. I'm going to start off with maggots. It's probably, I'm going to guess, about six foot deep. Uh, it's, it's an interesting swim. I've fished it before. I've had uh, Dacen roach, maybe small chub. I'm going to, like I say, I'll start with maggots and then uh, I'll probably switch, try and hemp and tears. I, I'm going to feed some tears and I've got some bread as well in, and a bit of mashed bread so I, I may put in mashed bread or liquidized bread as well just to uh, see what comes on that. Floats fairly standard, Avon float there taking about four grams this time, three gram olivette with a couple of shot underneath it, uh, a BB dropper shot there as a sort of mini bulk and uh, a number eight on the hook length with a number 16 barbed hook. Quite hopeful of getting a few fish, it's hard to say what, what I'll get today. But, uh, let's see how I get on. Okay, let's start fishing. I've got my disgorger, got my catapult. Expecting to get some dace on maggots, so uh, and I haven't got an awful lot of bait. I've got probably three quarters of a pint of maggots and a couple of pints of hemp, so see what I can get. First, seems to be dragging under a lot at the moment at six foot, so I think we might have to come down at least a foot. I don't think it's massively deep out there. Just had a dragonfly chasing the Olivette, thinks it's something it can eat. So let's knock a foot off. Maybe I've overshotted it, so I might have to take that BB off. I think I'm going to replace the BB with a number four, it's way overshotted. It's early part of the session, it's always worth taking your time to get the gear right, finding the right depth, getting the float shotted right, uh, being happy with the, where you're feeding, plumbing it, all those little things that pay off later on. Many years ago I watched Kevin Asher, something like 40 years ago on the King Sedgemore drain on a national, and this was in the days you couldn't plumb the depth or check your float before the start. And when the whistle went, he took 10 minutes plumbing the depth, getting the float right, playing around with the shot in. And when he was absolutely certain, he knew what was what in the swim, where the, where the, the shelf was and things like that. Then he started fishing and he put some ground bait in. And other anglers had caught a few rudd by then. And you think, God, they're dashing in and he's already half a pound or a pound behind. But that slow, steady approach paid off. He built his swim up gradually over the five hours and ended up with um, about 11 pounds, I think five kilos something as it was weighed in then. So he may have looked slow but uh, in this case the tortoise won the race quite easily. So let's try again. That's a lot better, that's not sinking out of sight every time now, so it's, uh, that's the correct shot in for that float. I'm going down quite sensibly now. That's a bite. There's a good current out there, so the bites should be quite positive. And that was a bite. And I've got what's probably a small dace, and I think these are going to be a because I haven't got half a gallon of maggots, which is probably what I should have. But there we go. I won't be able to feed these off easily. 
just like a couple of days ago, the bait is absolutely skinned. But I'm going to persevere with maggots for half an hour, see if we pick up anything else, any better dace. Roach or chub. I think given half a gallon of casters and a load of hemp with it, I'll probably get some good chub in this swim. Possibly even perch. I'm going to feed a closer. That's into the weed place in. Feed a closer swim in for the hemp. Whether I can get through it or not is another matter. It looks like I need to go. Looks like I need to go well across. to get a clear run. I fished it last, fished here last summer with hemp and tears with a waggler. It wasn't especially deep. One or two very good roach. On a swim like this, often there's the weed beds often kick up boils, so I'm looking for the smooth water. There's a, there's a lot of boily water out there. And once I get past those boils, then I'm getting a clean run, and that's where the fish has a bit of a slightly better fish. It's a small roach. Very encouraging to see these two and three ounce roach. Certainly, it won't, it won't be long before I try uh, tie a tear on there. And this hook, this hook is a, a barb 16, quite fine wire. And it's, although I prefer barbless for tears, it's just about big enough for a tear. So if I go on to bread, I'll be on a much bigger hook. Probably go on a a fine wire 12. Well, that was on the drop then. It's more like a chub. The float just sank out of sight on the... Uh, it's a small chub if I can keep him out of the weeds. Well, I think with half a gallon of maggots, you'll probably get a, a big catch out of here. Yeah, about a pound, maybe. If that was a dace, I'd be jumping up and down for joy, but uh, you never know up here, there's pound dace.
I'm going to cast out a feather the line with, with my finger on the reel and that straightens out the float as it lands because you don't really want it landing in a, in a heap. I'm hoping these little dice aren't going to be a pain. It'll just uh, hasten my switch to tears or bread. Just feather it down, quickly feed. I haven't got a huge amount of bait here, so these maggots are not going to last very long. And they're now starting to get little dace every cast, which is not what I want at all. Underneath them. Might just be a decent roach or a perch or a chub. Not so much every time a coconut, every time a peanut. These really are tiny. The wind has got quite strong now and uh, blowing very powerfully upriver. Gone a bit deeper, I'm picking up more weed now, but uh, I'll try it just for a little longer. It is a question of feed, feed, feed. Just keep feeding, never get out of that rhythm. Doesn't matter what you're catching, you're only going to get the better fish if you persevere with the feeding. One of the big big mistakes of people who are novices at trotting, they start feeding, they're great for 20 minutes and they stop. People who are more experienced, they come along, they try and help people trotting and they watch them and they, they'll come back and they say feed every cast. They come back half an hour later and they've stopped feeding. So I haven't got a huge amount of bait today. I haven't got a massive amount of time. So I'm just going to hope this, this uh, bait lasts the session. I can switch to bread later. If I miss a bite, the maggot's absolutely mullered. There's uh, a bit of skin on there with one maggot. Be nice, it would be nice to get something different, a, a perch or a, I don't know whether we'll get one. Ideally a good roach and I think they, they're there. There's some, a tinge of colour in the water which leads me to believe that a roach is possible but not with these tiddlers out there. Been fishing about half an hour now with maggots. I've had two little roach, about 10 dace, a couple of minnows, a pound chub. Uh, the maggots, are, I'm just getting absolutely mullered by these tiny fish and uh, it's not really what I want. So I'm gonna to switch to tears and uh, see what happens, feeding just hemp. And I'm gonna give that three quarters of an hour or an hour and then I'm gonna to switch to bread I've got a bit of liquidised bread and I've got some bread to mash up so I can try quite a positive approach. I had one or two nice dace and roach on bread on uh, Sunday and good roach on tears. I, I don't think this is as good a roach swim as where I was Sunday but you never know and that's the beauty of fishing. Despite trying hemp and tears and then uh, mash bread with flake on the hook for over an hour in that swim. I couldn't get any more response at all. I had no bites on tears or bread flake. The swim further downstream had become available so I moved down there and by then I'd got mashed bread. I changed floats to a bigger float that swims more like 12 foot deep. And it First I fished with a big hook of 10 with bread flake. I found that a 14 pine wire hook was best with a double punch. So actually punching the bread twice. 
and that brought me some uh, nice dace, nothing massive, and a, a couple of really good roach. Hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt a little bit more. Trotting is all about practice, getting used to feeling your way around the swim, trying a bit deeper, a bit shallower, holding back more, moving shots around, trying to get that float to go in a straight line at the right speed, trying to present the bait well. Today I've just shown you it's quite windy and uh, it was a beneficial wind and an easy wind to fish with because it was generally upstream and off my back and I could use that to my advantage. To get the feeding right and the bait presentation right and persist with both of them and you should do very well with trotting. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>